Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of The Glen Hour, where we talk about different famous Glens. There's the obvious Glen Close, Glen Fleshler, Scott Glen, Glen Shaddix, Glen Ford, Kimiko Glen, Glen Morshower, Steve Martin, Glen Plummer. But today we're going to be talking about Glen Ford. It should come as no surprise when I say that my first Glen Ford movie ever was Superman the movie. I didn't even know who he was, but I saw that movie as a kid, and it wasn't until last year, really, that I discovered Glen Ford and the great actor that he was in his time. So I went from the beginning of 2022 having only seen the Superman movie and now as of filming this video I've seen 16 of his movies and today I'm going to give you my top 10. So without further ado, let's start. Number 10 goes to The Violent Men. The Violent Men has a pretty slow beginning, a really good middle, and a pretty good ending. I think the ending is a bit tropey for the time. However, the middle is great because the stakes are high, they're raised, and that's when the story really starts moving. There's a specific scene that takes place in a bar. It's around the midpoint of the movie, and it has to do with Glenn Ford confronting a certain villainous character. Once that scene happens, the rest of the movie is good, but that scene in particular really had my attention, and it made me like the movie more. Before that, unfortunately, it was just kind of a slow burner in my opinion but I will say I really like Glenn Ford's character in this movie I mean the kind of character he plays here is my favorite type of character one who doesn't ever back down from what they believe in one who isn't a pushover I love those kinds of characters especially in these old movies experiment in terror grabs your attention right away I mean in the first five minutes you're already thrown into the movie and you already have an idea of what the movie is about and yeah it's pretty creepy in this movie Glenn Ford plays a police detective and he's the one assigned to the job of this woman who's getting stalked and tormented by this mysterious stalker killer guy. I don't want to go into too many details, so I'm trying to be vague. But although there are some cheesy moments in Experiment in Terror, I think it does have a lot going for it. I mean, for one, I mentioned that it grabs your attention right away, but there's also just some really well shot scenes and really creepy settings too. There's one scene in particular that like takes place in a mannequin shop. It's really creepy because you think that there might be someone in the shop, but you can't tell because they're just looking at a bunch of figures. And so really well set up. I like to that scene especially. Number eight goes to Jubal. I went into this movie with pretty high expectations solely for the performers. I mean, you have Glenn Ford, Ernest Borgnine, and Rod Steiger. Three actors from back in the day that I really enjoy. I think the first half does start on the slower end, but it does pick up, and as it picks up, we get a really good story. But story aside, it's also just a really beautiful movie to look at. I mean, you see the countryside, and this is the exact kind of movie that makes you just want to become a cowboy. I've only seen the movie once, but I will say I was wasn't expecting the direction that it went in, and I'm not sure if I'm a big fan of the direction it went in. But with that being said, it's definitely a movie that I would love to revisit someday. I mean, I gave it an 8 out of 10. If nothing else, I want to revisit it for the stunning locations and the great performances. Number 7 is a pretty special one, as it was Frank Capra's final movie he directed. It is Pocket Full of Miracles. This movie has a pretty big cast. It stars Glenn Ford, of course, but it also has Betty Davis. Thomas Mitchell, and Peter Falk. Usually it's pretty easy for me to label Glenn Ford as a standout of any movie he's in, but I'll actually give it to Betty Davis in this one because her performance is really well done here. I also think Peter Falk was a standout. Now I give this movie an eight out of 10 and the reason it doesn't get a higher rating is because I do think it is unnecessarily long. There's an entire side plot that I think you could get rid of in the movie and it would trim 20 to 30 minutes at least. And I get why they include this certain side plot because it shows character progression in a certain character of the movie but I think they could have gotten to that end result for this character in a different way that wasn't so long but runtime aside Frank Capra does it again because this movie has a great happy ending I had chills and it meant even more knowing that it was Frank Capra's final movie number six goes to Gilda Rita Hayworth and Glenn Ford make a great duo this movie is screaming noir and that's really the biggest strength to it Rita Hayworth's initial appearance is so iconic in fact, that was the only scene I knew about going into this movie. And although that's like her most iconic scene, there are so many other scenes that she really steals. Really, whenever she's on the screen, she steals the scene. But the thing is, Glenn Ford is just as good. Similar to most noir movies, he narrates the film, and I think that's a big strength as well. I just like it in noir movies when there's narration. I feel like that is almost an essential ingredient to a noir film. Although it's very obvious that Johnny and Gilda, they need some sort of relationship counseling, I will say it was 
very easy to root for the two of them to get together throughout the movie. And I just really liked the way everything came together by the end of Gilda. Like everything's wrapped up very nicely and it ends with references to things that happened earlier. It comes full circle and I just liked my viewing experience for Gilda. At number five, we have the movie that started it all for me. It is Superman the movie. Although Glenn Ford plays quite the small role in this movie, he definitely does stand out, especially now that I have seen his filmography. He is so good as Pa Kent. I mean, I know it's a pretty simple role by the books, but I still think he does a really good job. I rewatched Superman last year and there's that scene in the beginning where young Clark Kent saves Pa and Ma Kent from the truck falling on them. And you just hear that subtle hint of the Superman theme. And I just got chills seeing the reaction of Pa and Ma Kent to what this child has just done was so cool to watch and it just gave me the goosebumps. Plus like the original Superman movie is great. I love Christopher Reeves in it. He's amazing. I don't think this movie would be as good if Christopher Reeves wasn't in it. All right, let's move on. Coming in at my number four is The Gazebo, or as John MacGyver's character would say, The Gazebo. I don't know why he pronounces it that way, but he definitely does that in this movie. The Gazebo is a movie I discovered when I was just scrolling through Glenn Ford's filmography, trying to see what movies would interest me to give a chance. And this one stuck out to me because the plot for one, which I'll get to, but also he stars alongside Debbie Reynolds and I love Debbie Reynolds. I think she's adorable. John MacGyver's in it and I like him. He's in a few Twilight Zone episodes, so always happy when he pops up, but there's also a young Carl Reiner in it, and so that was fun seeing him too. But the movie itself is all about a man who is involved in a murder, and he's trying to get rid of the body, so his plan is to hide this dead body under the gazebo that they have just had installed in their backyard. But the kicker is that Glenn Ford plays a very nervous character. I've never seen him play this kind of character. He normally plays that very serious, stern role, so I think it was just fun seeing him play such a zany role, and see him play such a, like, nervous character. And as you watch the movie, you understand what his motives behind it are. Like, he is far from a murderer. In fact, there's even a scene at the beginning of the movie where he's taking a taxi home and the car bumps a pigeon, and he makes the cab driver stop the car so he can pick up the pigeon and nurse it back to help. Like, that's the kind of character that we're dealing with. And so imagine that kind of nervous character trying to dispose of a body in the gazebo of your backyard. And you don't want anyone to find out either. And so it, it builds for some dark humor, but also some funny scenes. It has very similar vibes to Arsenic and Old Lace, if you like that one. I would say this is definitely one of the most, if not the most underrated movie on the list. And so would highly recommend you check it out. It is rare to find if I remember right. I mean, I had to rent it for my library. And even at that, it was like a DVD. They don't even have a Blu-ray out for it. But if you have a chance to watch the gazebo, I would highly recommend it. Okay, we're at my top three. Coming in at number three is probably his most famous noir film it is The Big Heat. Once again, Glenn Ford plays that character that I love to see, the one that stands up for what's right and is very resilient. There are plenty of moments in The Big Heat where his character could just give up and move on from trials that have happened or from things that he technically doesn't really need to be involved in, but he stays consistent to his character and he stays consistent to doing the right thing and what's best overall for everyone. As I mentioned, it is a noir film and it has that noir rich dialogue that I love to hear when I watch a noir film. And the movie is also a lot darker than I was expecting. I wasn't quite expecting the violence that I got, but it was very welcome. I think it fit this movie and it just went really well with a darker tone. And I also think that it having a darker tone and Glenn Ford's character being so likable and so easy to root for, it made it stand out amongst other noir films. Like it's not just a carbon copy noir film where everything is shadows and noir dialogue and everything. And yeah, it's my third favorite Glenn Ford film. I already know that my next movie is like significantly higher than most people's Glenn Ford's rankings, but my number two goes to Blackboard Jungle. One of my favorite subgenres of film is when a teacher comes to a misbehaved class and tries to lead them in the right way, tries to help them make right decisions and everything, and that's what Blackboard Jungle is on the surface, so that's what got me intrigued. That along with the fact that it stars Glenn Ford and Sidney Poitier, two of my favorites. But the way that Blackboard Jungle differs from other movies of the same subgenre is it's not not quite as cut and paste as those other movies. Like a lot of those other movies play into the trope of teacher comes to teach misbehaved students and then by the end of the movie, all the misbehaved students are changed people and they love their teacher. Hurrah, yeah. Dude, jalapeno cheese dip? 
<laughs> but this movie doesn't really go in that direction. I mean, yes, you see the kids convert to Glenn Ford's character, but there are still some students who actively fight against him and who rebel against him. I've mentioned this in a video before, so I'm sorry I'm repeating it, but I just think it's such a fascinating fact. But my grandma, when I told her I watched this movie, she actually said that she wasn't allowed to watch this film when it came out. Her mother wouldn't let her because supposedly when the movie came out, it had kind of a bad rep of what juvenile youth were like at this time frame. Parents didn't want their kids seeing it because there was such a bad representation of students misbehaving and they didn't want their kids to get any ideas from the students in this movie. I think that's so fascinating and it, it totally makes sense too. Like when I was younger, I wasn't allowed to watch Rugrats because Angelica was a brat. I still, to this day, I don't think I've ever seen a Rugrats episode all the way through. Yeah, no. But I know there's a character named Chucky. I think there's a show called Rugrats All Grown Up and they were like kids, like, I mean, like, older kids and I, I think I was allowed to watch that at least I watched it I don't know let's get back to Glenn Ford so yeah those are the reasons I love the movie because it is very edgy it's risky but I also love seeing Glenn Ford act alongside Sidney Poitier as I mentioned love them both and the movie starts off with a banger song with Rock Around the Clock by Billy Haley and his comments if you watch my award show the Alfies it's the annual award show I do each year for the movies I've seen for the first time my number one shouldn't come as any surprise it's 310 to Yuma the reason I reference my award shows because this actually won best picture. My favorite first time watch of 2022 was 310 to Yuma. So that should kind of speak for itself right there, but I still want to gush about this movie because I am still a massive fan. The thing I love about 310 to Yuma is how nerve wracking it is. It's a Western thriller and Glenn Ford gives such a good performance as this menacing villain. He demands the scene anytime he's on screen. He also won the Alfie for my favorite performance by an actor in a leading role last year. And he won my Alfie for just like favorite actor of the year. So like Glenn Ford's a big deal for me guys. I love this guy. If you like movies like High Noon or you like movies that are intriguing from the moment they begin, then I, I highly recommend you check out 310 to Yuma. And if you're going into it expecting a black and white cliche Western film, perfect. Go into it with those expectations and I hope you enjoy it because that that's actually how I went into it and it exceeded my expectations. It is anything but a cliche black and white Western film. So I hope you can go into it and really love it the way that I loved it from the first time I saw it and the second time I saw it. So I highly recommend you seek it out. As I mentioned at the beginning of my video, I've seen 16 Glenn Ford movies. So a lot left to be seen. I do feel confident in saying that I've seen all of his bigger movies, but there's a lot of those underrated gems. I mean, I mentioned the gazebo in this video and I never heard of that before last week. And so I know that there are plenty more to check out. I'm not giving up on him or anything, but as of today, this is my top 10 favorite movies from Glenn Ford. I know that there are some fans out there watching this. Please leave your comments below on what your favorite movies from him are. Leave your rankings and leave me recommendations on what I should watch so I can add them to the watch list. Thank you all so much for watching and I hope you have a great day. Okay.